All right, now this implementation has a tiny problem. We can set the initial coordinate of this point, and we can also draw it, but there is no way for us to read the coordinate. So I cannot access point that the X here to display to the user. What's the workaround? Well, one simple solution is to define a method like this, get X, and here we simply return this dot X. Because in this class, we do have access to all the private members of this class, but we cannot access them from the outside. Okay? Now here, I can always call point.getx to get the x value and display it to the user. Now let's talk about another use case. Maybe we want to give the user the ability to set the initial coordinate here, but we also want them to be able to change this coordinate later only if they provide a value within a given range. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. I'm going to define another method here, set x. Now this method is going to get a value. That's the new value for the x field. Let me scroll down. Now here, first we can do some basic validation. So if value is less than zero, we want to throw an error. Throw new error value cannot be less than zero. Otherwise, we want to set this dot x to this new value. Okay. Now with this implementation, we can always change the value of the x field like this point dot set x, we set it to a new value. Now if you have a use case like that in your applications, you can use what we call a property. So in TypeScript and in a lot of object-oriented programming languages, we have a concept called property, which is exactly for this very use case. So look at how I can define a property here. We start with a keyword, which is get or set, and then the name of the property, which is in this case x. And after that, we're going to have parentheses, just like a method. Okay. Now, similarly, I'm going to change this to set with a space, so we have the set keyword, and here it's like we have a function, a method. Now, what is the difference? The difference is that we can use these properties like fields. So here, I can read x like this, dot, note the icon of x. It's the same icon we have for fields. It's not a method anymore. So we can read x, and we can also set it like this, point.x, we set it to 10. We don't have to call a method like this. It's a cleaner syntax, okay? So this is what properties are for. If you have private fields that you want to give maybe a read-only access to the outside, or if you want to give the consumer of your classes the ability to set the values, but you want to have some basic validation, that's when you use a property. Now, in this case, if I want to give only the read-only access to this underlying field, I can simply comment out the setter. So we call this method a setter and the other method a getter. Okay. And now look at this compilation error. We cannot change the value of X. Now let's bring this back. One last thing before we finish this lecture. So here I have used a capital X for the name of my X property. In JavaScript and in TypeScript, we use camel notation to name our fields. So that's why Earlier, we defined this private field here using camel casing notation. Camel casing means the first letter of the first word is lowercase, and the first letter of every word after is uppercase. Now, what should we do to use camel casing notation for our properties? If I name this the lowercase x, it clashes with the existing field. So let me revert this back. A convention we use to solve this problem is to prefix the name of the underlying field with an underline. So let's rename this using F2 and prefix it with an underline. Okay. Now similarly for the Y parameter or the Y field, I'm also going to use underline Y. Then we can rename this property from capital X to lowercase x. Once again, we press F2, lowercase x. And note that both instances, both the getter and the setter are updated. Now, we can work with this X property exactly the same way we use the X field. So here's the lesson. 
A property looks like a field from the outside, but internally it's really a method in the class. Well, more accurately, it's either one method, which is a getter or a setter, or a combination of a getter and a setter. Hi, thank you for watching my Angular tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with others. Also, you can subscribe to my channel for free new videos every week. This video is part of my complete Angular course with almost 30 hours of high quality content where you will learn everything about Angular from the basic to the advanced topics all in one course. So you don't have to jump from one tutorial to another. In case you're interested, you can get this course with a big discount using the link in the video description. And if not, that's perfectly fine. Continue watching as the next section is coming up.